If you can be familiar with these special rules that we're going to talk about, it's faster than plugging it into your calculator. Okay, so if you, I'd like you to be familiar with these simply because it'll save you some time. Okay, there are several uh, special product forms that you need to be aware of. Okay, the first is the sum and difference of terms. Okay, if you have two factors that are the sum and the difference of the exact same terms, if you were multiplying these out, uh, you'd FOIL it, right? And you'd get the outer and inner products that cancel each other. So the shortcut for this is if you can just take the first term, square it, subtract the square of the second term, and you have your solution. Okay. So if I gave you 5x minus 2 times 5x plus 2, this fits the pattern of difference of squares, or the sum and difference of terms. And so when you multiply that out, the product will be the difference of their squares. So what is the quantity 5x squared? Square the 5, square the x, and then it's always going to be minus, and what's 2 squared? Okay. So being able to work through this special product form is going to be quicker than trying to type all of that into your calculators. Okay, so you do want to be familiar with that if possible. Another special product form that you should be aware of is a binomial square. In the binomial square, if you take a sum of terms and you square it, the pattern for this product will be the first term squared plus twice the product of the terms plus the last term squared. So again, if you're looking at this example, if I take 5x minus 2 and I square it, or let's start with 5x plus 2. Okay. Yeah, Jeff. Polynomial form. Yeah. Um, you just enter like one time over at that to see like which one it is. You could. It it'll read parentheses as being the inferred multiplication. Yeah, it'll just come out of this one five x squared minus one five x squared. But again, if you can do it by yeah, just a I mental calculation, it'll be faster, but yeah, you can confirm it or, or do it on the calculator like that. Alright. Yeah, Rick. Can you FOIL the binomial square? To get that pattern? It will it's a pattern. It's based on foiling. But the pattern is just the first term squared plus twice the product of the terms plus the last term squared. And so by doing that, if you know the pattern, you can, do, you can expand it really quickly because what is 5x squared? Square 5, square x. Now, what's the product of these two terms? 10x. When you double 10x, what do you get? 20x. And then what's the last term squared? 4. So here is your expanded form for that winds up being easy to do quick to do if you know what the pattern is okay, so if I took 3x minus 7 and squared it so even the negatives uh, you don't need to memorize a separate form even though your books always give you two forms it still fits this same pattern so the pattern is first term squared so what's 3x quantity squared square 3, square x. What's the product of these terms? Now notice my 7 now, my last term, isn't a positive number anymore. It's a negative number. So what is 3x times a negative 7? Negative 21x. When you double negative 21x, what do you get? Negative 42x. And then you square your last term. What is negative 7 squared? Negative 7 times negative 7 is a positive 49. Okay, so the negatives do take care of themselves. You don't have to memorize a sep or learn a separate form for the difference of two terms, quantity squared. If you want to, you can write it down as a second form. The book has that. I've always taught it as just one rule. Okay. All right, the next rule is a binomial.
Okay, so we did the binomial square. Again, the binomial square, what we just looked at was a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Okay, the binomial cube has a special pattern as well. Okay, and to show or to uh, look at this pattern, I'm just going to go off topic just really quickly. Okay, there's a pattern that looks like this. It's called Pascal's triangle. Okay, and what it is is each row of terms, okay, Rick, leave it alone. Okay, each row of terms here is just the sum of the two terms kind of up and diagonal to it. So this next row, you're adding the two terms above. So 3 plus 1 is 4, 3 plus 3 is 6. And so as you go through this pattern, you can see the numbers that are generated on here. These are actually the coefficients of the binomial powers. So what that means is the Pascal's triangle has some applications in probability, has some applications in a number of different things. One of them is this binomial powers. So if you take a binomial and you take it to the zero power, it's equal to one. If you take a binomial to the first power, it's equal to a plus b. The numbers in Pascal's triangle are simply the coefficients of each consecutive term in any binomial expansion. Okay, so here's the binomial square, which we saw right here. The pattern of the coefficients is 1, 2, 1. Okay, so the way that you fit this is you take your first term, start with the highest power, so 2, and then decrease the powers as you move to the right. So we have a to the second, a to the first, a to the zero, so we don't write anything there. With the last term, or the second term, you're going to begin from the right, take it to the highest power, and then decrease as you move to the left. Okay, so this is how, again, you could derive this binomial square pattern. It's a 1 to 1 pattern of coefficients. The powers of A decrease starting at 2, 1, 0. The patterns for B decrease moving from right to left, 2, 1, 0. So when you're looking at this binomial cube, the way that you look at it is if you could, can remember this pattern, 1, 3, 3, 1. That's the pattern of coefficients for your terms in that expansion. And you just start with the first term to the highest power cube, and then each term you reduce the power by one, and you work backwards from the right with the second term. So b cubed, b squared, b to the first, and that is your binomial cube pattern. Okay, so again, uh, let's take a look at how this would fit in an actual number. So if I gave you this quantity and asked you to expand it or uh, to multiply it out, the way that you would do that is you take your pattern of coefficients, 1, 3, 3, 1. Okay, then you're going to take your first term, 2x. You're going to cube it, square it to the first, and then to the zero, so you leave it blank. Working from right to left, you're going to take your second term, which includes the sign, so a positive 3, you're going to cube it, square it to the first. There's always going to be a positive in between all of these. And now as you simplify what you have, 1 times 2 cubed is 8x cubed. Here we have 2x quantity squared. You square the 2, square the x. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 4, 36x squared. Here you're cubing or squaring the 3. 3 squared is 9. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 9 is 54. x to the first. And then 3 cubed, 27. Okay. So again, what I'm doing here is just showing you this. Now, is this faster than typing it into your calculator? No, no not at all. Okay. Is doing, it, doing this one faster than typing it into your calculator? Probably or pretty close. I mean, um, for this binomial cube, you won't need to do it by hand. I just wanted you to see kind of where it's derived from. Easier thing to do is to just expand it out. Now, if you were to type this in, 
2x plus 3 to the power of 3 and hit enter, what do you notice happens? Yeah, it just it tells you it just repeats what was given. So in order to write it in polynomial form, the command that tells you to write as a polynomial is expand. Okay, so the expand function is under the algebra tab F2, the third one down. You do need to put parentheses around what you're expanding. But when you hit enter, it'll give you your answer in that expanded form. And you can see here it confirms what we did by hand. 